What is a job that someone could easily walk into, pretend like they know what they are doing, and fool everyone into believing they are an actual employee? Back when I worked at McDonald's, after my shifts were over I liked to go to the rallies across the street. One day I was walking through the store with a basket of groceries when an old lady stopped me and asked me where the cooking oil was. I thought nothing of it and said, I'm not totally sure, but I think it might be that way, and pointed to the left. She got all shocked and offended, and she said, you think and I nodded, you mean you don't even know? I was confused, so I said, well, I mean, you don't know either. She was about to respond when she looked down and saw the McDonald's logo on my shirt and said, oh, you don't work here, um, sorry, and she scampered off. I had a pretty good laugh about it. Comma I was confused, so I said, well, I mean, you don't know either absent-minded shrug personal trainer fitness instructor if you are well put together you'll be amazed how much bulls you can sling and get away with it your calf muscles are not bulking up very quickly you should kick this medicine ball around for a while one time i was visiting the museum of modern art in manhattan with a large multilingual tourist group I ended up in the lobby holding maps in various languages and collecting the translating headphones as members of my tour group finished walking through the museum. As I was wearing a suit and holding various items other museum visitors assumed I was a museum employee there to assist visitors. As people came up to me with questions, I decided to just help them instead of sending them away. At first I didn't realize what was happening, but eventually I started to have fun with it. Mom, the Jackson Pollock display is on the 4th floor, thank you for visiting MoMA, etc. It was all fun and games for a while. Eventually a gentleman wearing an orange reflective vest and a hard hat came up to me. He asked if it was okay for him and his crew to take a 15 minute break. Apparently, there were contractors doing some work at the museum. I told him to take 20 minutes. That last part made me smile. Okay so here is what you do. You walk into any office in the US. In a short sleeve shirt with a collar. Some nice pants and decent shoes. You go to a moderately busy looking office. Find someone that looks like middle management and tell them you are here to look at a computer that was having network connectivity and printer issues. 90% chance someone in the office has something that is moderately like that. You then get taken to that person's desk. Now here is where it can get a bit tricky, as the person may not want to leave your side, but you need to tell them this could take a bit, so they should probably go get some coffee or take an early lunch. Once they are gone you take their computer and monitors and GTFO. Holy crap this thread reminded me of one of the most farcical things ever to happen in my life. A few years ago, before the internet was big, a family friend met and fell in love with a Portuguese girl who, it turns out, was a princess and heir to the throne. Spoiler, she wasn't. I'm also unsure if she was Portuguese or not, so just play along. Full stop. For some reason, said family friend, let's call him James. Didn't bother checking this out. James is also a fairly wealthy guy and princess made up basically leeched off him, without him questioning why she was never able to pay for anything. Occasionally, however, she needed to do something to keep up the pretense that she was a princess, so she would invite him on state visits, where there were never any photographers, but he didn't question this. Once she took him to a piece of land that was having a hotel built on it, she told him it was a new palace for her family. The builders began talking to her in Portuguese. I imagine words to the effect of get off our building site, but obviously he couldn't understand. When they got engaged she had flowers delivered from heads of state the world over. Only it turns out she had ordered them all on his credit card, and from the florist down the road. But my absolute favorite moment of this story was when Princess Made Up took James to see ill patients from her homeland. She walked into a hospital and took a white jacket off the stand and proceeded to tell doctors she was here to visit the infirm, and then paraded James round the hospital, talking to patients and checking their notes. Did I mention she told him she was a qualified doctor? The penny finally dropped about a year into it. But holy crap it was funny, because everyone apart from James could see what was going on and, despite people telling him she wasn't a princess, he was Adam and she was. TL. DR. Family friend thought he was engaged to a princess. She was crap at covering it up, but surprisingly he fell for it.
Well if he wants to recover some of his losses, my cousin is a Nigerian prince. We're having a little trouble getting some funds stateside, maybe he could help. I was wearing a light blue shirt and a navy tie at Macy's and a lady stopped me to get shoes in her size. I freaked out and pretended to quit right in front of her. All things taken into account that could be friggin hilarious to do. Show up in something resembling a store's outfit, and in front of a bunch of customers you walk to another employee. Start tearing them a new one for how horrible the job is and how they mistreat you and then you just yell I quit and walk out the store leaving people wondering and the employee confused. As long as you have a clipboard with paper, a pen, and walk with purpose, people will believe whatever you want. It always helps to flip through a few sheets of the paper as if you're double checking something while you walk by someone. Walk into Best Buy with a blue polo and car keys. It can't be that hard to relay vague information about some tech product. I had a royal blue button down embroidered with my company logo on it. Needed something pronto during an on-site visit. I had two employees ask me if I was a manager and a customer get mad at me. I walked into fries once and this dude was just being an absolute dong because I wouldn't tell him about the printers. Didn't click that he thought I was an employee. Oh man. So I had a friend who, on more than one occasion, at different locations obviously, would go into a chain sit down restaurant such as an outback steakhouse on a busy Saturday night, wearing nice slacks, a warm pastel shirt, nice shows, etc. Walk up to the host stand and take a bunch of manager business cards. Then, he would go around the restaurant and ask people how their meal was going. Anyone who had even something slightly wrong with their meal like oh, we love it now, we're so hungry though since you guys were on a wait he would say something like I'm so sorry for your troubles. Tell you what, why don't you come back sometime and enjoy a nice dinner on me then he'd write like free dinner for two or something on the business card and scribble the real manager's initials. He'd do this for a few tables around the restaurant then piece the frick out before anyone knew what happened. That whole let me get you something free using my business card as a coupon thing is universal enough in the restaurant world that even if they didn't do such things at this location, the managers were now in the awkward position when that guest returned to either give them free food, or debate with the guest and tell them that this wasn't their card handwriting etc. Robin Food Museum Gallery Aid Literally anyone can walk in, put on the uniform shirt or dress professional. Stand in the corner of the gallery and tell people not to take photos with flash. No food, no water and no loud noises. And the occasional no. You can't sit on that bench. That one is art. I worked at Swarovski, the crystal store, and I was honestly a little disappointed when I discovered my co-workers didn't extensively research the process by which lead crystal is made prior to working there. So if you know 7 or 8 words for sparkly you could probably work there too. Brilliant, incandescent, shimmering, shining, luminescent, reflective refractive, scintillating, starry, that's all I have off the top of my head, and some probably don't fit too well. Wear a high visc jacket or vest, safety boots and slightly worn hard hat and you can wander onto 80% of all construction sites unchallenged. United States Congressman Sit down on either side of the room and talk to the guys around you. When there's a vote, vote just like all of them do. I work at a call center and we follow what are called scripts for our calls. If you could log into one of our computers, pop on a headset, and read the script then you are set. No one would be any the wiser. Except at the end of the week when you haven't committed suicide or quit they would know you aren't actually a call center employee. My friend to me a story last night of this guy who lied to an oil company about his experience on a certain type of rig. He kept a notebook with notes from the internet and advice from other friends on how to operate the machine. The first day the dude walked on the rig they treated him like a seasoned vet. An airline pilot, Thomas Sum, a maintenance engineer who became a Boeing 737 pilot by flying a few nights in a flight simulator and printing a fake airliner pilot license. Amazingly enough, he flew passengers for 13 years without any incidents. I once went to a store not realizing that I was basically wearing the same thing the employees wear. People came up and asked me questions the entire time I was there, and since it was a store I knew very well I answered. My mom used to work in a deli at a supermarket, 
and a couple guys came up to the customer service desk, where they also sell cigarettes, and holding their ladder, claimed that they were performing a routine inspection of the sprinkler system in the ceiling. In true super spee fashion they crawled through the ceiling and proceeded to rob Safeway of thousands of dollars of cigarettes from the room behind customer service and just walked out, unquestioned with nothing but a duffel bag full of cigarettes and a massive ladder in hand. I wouldn't call this easily done by anyone but it took major balls and I'm very proud. I have a family member who is a contractor providing services to our military. Those services, which I won't detail here, require that he have and maintain a clean room in order to clean parts and equipment he is providing to fulfill contracts. Picture a bunny suit and all, with many steps required to clean and hermetically seal parts going on to military craft. He has one major competitor. My family member began losing bid after bid to this competitor, who kept coming in with the low bid for the contract. My family member knew this company didn't have a clean room, or access to one nearby, which went out of business, and it was impossible to bid solo if those clean room services were included. Clearly, it wasn't fulfilling the clean room requirement portion of the contract, and that's why it could bid so low. Just lied about it and zeroed out the cost. My family member filed formal complaints but it went nowhere, not even a reply that any inspection or follow up had been taken. My family member got fed up, made a script, called the competitor, and made an appointment for a plant inspection, and particularly, tore off the clean room to take photographic evidence of the facilities in response to complaints rendered during the bidding process. The contracts they were working on were really sensitive, and if it were not bad enough they were lying to get the low bid. They were endangering our enlisted men and women by not properly preparing the parts and equipment they needed in the field. This crap matters. So, he called, made the appointment, and the competitor scrambled a few times to postpone, and finally said we've had a systems failure and we just had to close the clean room. My family member said that's unfortunate, but you are prohibited from bidding on any contract requiring a clean room yada 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 I won't write you up but you need to act fast. I'm paraphrasing, but you get the idea. They withdrew all those bids, and they came to my family member, as they should have in the first place. They have never replaced the clean room they never had and they don't bid on the same projects anymore. Just means they are lying elsewhere. 2. Probably, my family member was dishonest about his identity, but, he was just so furious he was bidding honestly and completely and losing to scumbags who were not. Problem solved. For now. Anyway. I was at a bar once and met the hostess at the door that I could get someone to show me there it mind you this is right after they get carded outside the door. The hostess is for anyone who wants to get a private table or whatever. So I tell her to step out from behind her podium and I take her place. First attempt is a complete failure as I still have my beer on the podium. Though it was a couple and I had the girl hooked but her boyfriend called BS. They laughed and walked past me. Second attempt I stashed the beer under the podium and noticed a phone as I set it down. Then it dawned on me, the phone would be what I needed. Two guys walk in and I have the phone held button side down and tell them I need to see their eyes. I get a confused look from both and quickly explain that I have to scan their eyes. I get each id one at a time and hold the phone over the eyes going back and forth. Scanning, while shining the light from the phone screen into the id. Both get their eyes back and I inform them that they are good to go. Retail. When I worked in that sector I would just read the packaging back to the customer. Slightly changed. And they were always really happy for my help. I once walked into a restaurant after it was closed and sat at a meeting to discuss how they could improve their poor business. They never suspected me being not part of them. I gave suggestions on how to improve their service even though I've never ate there before. I was chucked out an hour later after they realized I wasn't a waiter of theirs. Wear some $20 40 slacks, a $20 shirt, a $8 tire, and some $80 shoes, $2 clipboard. $14 Walmart special briefcase. Walk into the back end of any retail store. Straight to the inventory computer. You won't get a question. If you do, ask their name. Say you're Connolly's boss, district merchandising manager. They will panic. They weren't told district would be in today. Crap, the break room is a huge mess. He's gonna go to the break room. Frick, now he wants my name. 
just disappear. Disappear into the gears of this hardly oiled retail machine. And don't be around him the rest of the day. Ask why the insert merchandising promotional cardboard crap isn't more organized and ready go to for the launch. That'll give you about 30 minutes 1 hours of time without a single question being asked of you. But then, you grab the promotional Blu-rays, and you're now a hero to the pirates. I work loss prevention at Target we just had an incident where a guest put on red and khaki walk to the electronics department and say he needed to bring a camera, the ones we lock up, to guest service, he then tried to walk out with it. My cousin would put on a blue polo shirt and khakis and pretend to work at our local aquarium. He would go to where people lined up for tours and take people on tours and read off the information from the plaques on the wall. He got on the email list and eventually scheduled an interview and got hired. A super Walmart, not a regular Walmart, but not as a Walmart employee, and preferably at night. I was hired for some contract based on my technical skills to do what amounted to delivery and installation. I was given two embroidered polos and an id badge. Let me tell you, the combination of those two items is like an invisibility cloak. I would walk in and ask for the manager, then tell him that I was going to take his point of sale units and replace them with new ones. The answer was almost always okay, just let us know before you work on the cigarette aisle. No paperwork, no verification with management, and this with most of them having zero warning that we were coming. We'd just load them into shopping carts and carry them to the back to put on pallets. We'd use their pallets and their plastic wrap to do it. Only a couple of times did anyone have any interest in what we were doing with them. I.e. that we weren't just taking the old ones to a truck without bringing the new ones in. It is worth noting that the vast majority of equipment that we replaced was the exact same model as its replacement and in perfect working condition. It was just time to be replaced according to the lease, to be put beside all of the consistently broken equipment for which we didn't have replacements. Everyone just assumes you are supposed to be there. I was almost never stopped and asked who I was. The exceptions were almost always when I tried to use the fax machine in the personnel office, when I forgot my badge, or when we worked long enough for the day shift manager to show up, because for whatever reason, night shift managers are almost all chill and day shift managers are almost all uptight busybodies. This does not work at a classic style Walmart. The managers there have a tight leash on everything that happens in their store, and nothing will happen without T's being crossed and I's being dotted. Way back in the day I worked at Myers. It's like a much better Walmart. I was never introduced to a boss. Never told what my job was. My schedule was printed out on a wall. So I came in clocked in and walked around. Bag some groceries go sit in the break room and read. Walk around some more. I started clocking and then leaving. Come back 8 hours later and clocking out. So someone could work in a retail giant. Almost 2 years ago, I took a job in the PC department at Best Buy. It wasn't what I wanted I was looking for IT work but it was the only thing available so I took it while continuing to look for work. On the first day of my hiring literally just me with a few other new people watching HR videos in the back a manager busts in the rooms. Throws us all blue polos and tells us that 3 people called in sick and we have to work the floor. No training whatsoever, no access to registers or any knowledge whatsoever with stocking or the warehouse. Barely even a handle on the layout of the store. By the time I got the lunch break, every ex-employee in the PC department was directing customers to me because I could actually answer their PC networking questions and not just vaguely wave my hands in the direction of $85 monster cables. So yeah, if you know anything about computers you could easily pass for a Best Buy employee, and the people who actually work there will probably thank you for helping them out. Paramedic in a small town. The majority of my time is watching TV and cooking. Occasionally I have to drive a mostly healthy person to hospital. Backstage caterer at a concert. Me and some friends just flashed our college IDs. It was at the university's campus arena to security, grabbed some aprons and a cart of food, fruit bowl, pasta, etc, and just wandered around backstage, got some food, chatted up the backup singers, and snagged a couple bottles of booze, only problem, the concert was Michael Bolton, nice enough guy, but still, Michael Bolton, plumber, apparently, a few months back, 
a guy walked into our office and asked one of my co-workers where the water main was. The co-worker showed him, then went back to his desk and continued working. The guy shut off the water and left. A little while later, another co-worker asked why the water wasn't working. Oh, some guy came in and shut it off. Who was he with us? I don't know. Did you get his name? What did he look like I don't remember. They called the water company, and apparently this guy had been going down the road pulling this stunt all day. So they were in the area and turned the water back on right away, but were annoyed that nobody had any info on who this guy was or why he was doing it. When I was down in Memphis at the Gibson factory I was talking to my parents about a one of the SGs on display. I guess some other customer heard me talking and then they started asking me questions about other guitars. I liked showing them around the store and I kept it up for about 15 minutes but eventually had to, to tell them I wasn't an actual employee when my parents said we had to leave. So to answer your question, I guess anything in retail is pretty easy to fake. I actually did this once. There was a construction site near my college. I got bored one day and tried to see what I could do. I put on an oversized flannel type sweater shirt, hard hat, from my landscaping job, clipboard and paper and just walked around for like 10 minutes writing stuff down. It seems kinda lame now but it felt really awesome. Old thread is old so this is probably gonna get buried but... A friend of mine dressed business casual way with a clipboard and some forms and brought along two of his friends in worker attire. They proceeded to walk straight into our university administration office, find a decent looking couch, check the forms, agree that it was the right couch and proceed to haul it away. No one questioned them, asked questions or anything. They had the couch in their dorm for a while before they set it up in random locations on campus for passing students to sit on before it finally got confiscated by campus grounds after maybe like two weeks. A long time ago, I accidentally, fashion fail, wore a red polo and khakis into a target. I was hanging around the electronics area when a manager yelled at me to get back to work. I kindly told her no and then she started barking at me about my missing name tag. Things got weird quick when I told her I didn't work there. Upper management, in a moderately large company, just use a lot of buzzwords, put on a very fake smile, and do everything you can think of to obstruct productivity, and destroy employee moral. CEO, just be white, male, and tall, dress the part and no one would ever guess you weren't qualified until the company folds. And then you would be given another CEO job because you have experience. Except for the fact that I've met at average height black and female CEOs. This is actually true. Filing for incorporation is easy. Funny story. A guy bluffed his way into my uncle's school as a teacher. He forged his certificates and completely nailed the interview. No one in the school administration caught onto it until the kids grades started plummeting. I had a job where I explained to people how to install those Visa card machines for their business. Which is ridiculously easy BTW. You plug them in and they basically install themselves. Enter a code, a little walkthrough on how to use it. Bad a bing. Done. People actually thought I was some kind of genius because everyone got their machine working when they called me and lauded over how great I was. I'm just good at explaining things. That's all. Never had a busy day. Out of 8 hours I spent half an hour working, at the most, spent the rest of the day fricking around on the internet. For the heck of it I wrote Harry Potter erotic fanfiction, and had 40,000 followers. I never had 40,000 people pay attention to a dang thing in my life. I am a pizza driver. I also work at an auto parts store. I had to deliver to a competitor of my parts store. The clerk who had ordered the food was struggling finding what his customer needed. I listened to what was being said before he paid me. After we were done I said his customer needed a particular part number. IT guy. Since all you need to know is how to google. And everyone thinks you are a genius. Oh and install a Debbie reader. Don't forget about Ultron. I heard that NASA uses it. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video.
Bye for now.